commitment, passion, performance, countless hours of training. These are just a few of the things our dreams are made of. We are Cirque du Soleil artists and we all have a story to tell. Behind the scenes, behind the makeup and all the costumes, this is unfiltered, raw, like you've never seen before. Welcome to Cirque Stories. Hi, I'm Christina Jones, and I'm your host for Cirque Stories. I'm a synchronized swimmer in Cirque du Soleil's production O at the Bellagio. My synchronized swimming career before I got to Cirque included competing in the 2008 Olympic Games and winning world championships with my duet partner Bill May. I really realized that I was done competing with synchronized swimming. I was done with such um, structure and I wanted to express myself as an artist and Cirque du Soleil was the perfect avenue for this. I got to explore a whole new side of my sport that I had never seen before. Competitive synchronized swimming is extremely regimented and precise, and after nearly 15 years of it, I needed to let my hair down. While some of that same precision is important at O, there's way more room for creativity, exploration, and artistic growth. A lot of my synchro idols had joined Cirque after their competitive careers, and I always knew I wanted to follow in their footsteps. In 2007, my Olympic team had a training camp in Vegas, and I finally got a chance to see O. That confirmed it, I knew that I wanted to perform on that stage one day. At first, I had a hard time adjusting to the nocturnal schedule of a circus performer, but then I realized we have virtually our entire day free. I decided to put myself through school and attend classes during the day while doing 10 shows a week at night. My story has been told time and time again. It's always sugar-coated. It just portrays this fake reality that everything is roses and sunshine all the time. and. While the Olympics were fantastic, they were a huge highlight of my life, I feel that the true story hasn't really been told yet. The story behind the scenes, I want these stories to be real, unfiltered, and raw. As I started to look around backstage and talk to my friends with Cirque, I started to realize how incredible everyone's stories really are. I realized that this is what I need to be doing. I need to be sharing these stories with the world. We are Cirque performers, and every night we perform for you. We make you laugh, we make you cry, we entertain you. But behind the makeup and the costumes and all the masks and everything you see, each of us has an individual story to tell. We wanted to invite you behind the scenes, behind the curtain, to see what really goes on backstage, what really goes on in life before we show up at work to entertain you. Last year, my life threw a huge surprise at me. I thought I was done with competitive synchronized swimming, but it turns out I wasn't. Um, a new event called the Mixed Duet was added to the FINA World Championships, and a mixed duet is when a man and a woman swim together. A huge moment for the Americans in particular, <laughs> Bill May Brilliant. and Christina Jones. Up until last year, men were banned from elite competitions of synchronized swimming, and it turns out that I got paired with one of my very best friends, Bill May and we had a pretty incredible experience together and I decided to bring him here to help tell that story a little bit and I think that through talking with him you'll be able to see a little bit of who I am and how Bill and I work together. Yeah. <laughs> Not only have I known Bill since I was 10, but now we get to perform together for Cirque. Take one. Woo here you go. Everybody sees the fame and glory and just like the final moment of a lot of hard work when you watch sporting events, when you watch the Olympics, world championships, whatever it is. But they don't really see what goes on behind the scenes. And I just really wanted us to have a chance to share with people what it's like to prepare for such a huge event. That whole journey from start to finish, mm -hmm. you know, you have so many ups and downs that people don't see. And I think it is nice for people to see the hard work that goes into it and just how difficult it is 
to really go after. You know, you don't get breaks. You don't have time for your friends. You don't have time for your family. You don't have time to do your laundry. Yeah. You I think the I mean? sacrifice, the sacrifice is something that people just don't understand. Like yeah. you moved from New York to California just to train. You left your family when you were 16 mm -hmm. to do that. And I homeschooled the last couple of years of high school just because I was I was leaving home at 4.30 in the morning, driving across the Bay Area to do weights and train and work out at Stanford University. Then I would go to high school, go do a full day of high school, and then I would train 3 to 9.30 p.m. and barely be able to get my homework done and then wake up at 4.30 again and do it all over. And my parents just realized it's, it's crazy. And you either have a chance to train for your Olympic dream mm -hmm. or you can have a normal teenage life and I chose to go for it. Some people say, oh my gosh, synchronized swimming, that's amazing, but like, that's really one of my callings, I think. Like, I think people need to know the effort that we put in and how mm -hmm. difficult what we do really is because when you compare our training to other sports, mm -hmm. it's insane. Well, you know, I think in that aspect, I think if there's somehow that we can use that as a challenge, you know, when people don't know the sport or they don't understand the sport, mm -hmm. to somehow kind of, you know, make them realize or express to them or invite them t into our world, yeah. I think that could be something that we could really use to showcase synchronized swimming as more of an athletic sport and just um, get a little bit more respect yeah. from people because yeah. I think people do say, you know, like it's floating in the water, it's not mm -hmm. this. And I think that just comes from one, not getting enough media. For yeah. the sport and yeah. two just people they've never tried it you know and we would train when we were training we could train up to 10 hours a day and not even blink 10 hours you know, in the water yeah without you touching know, like the side of the pool you're not touching the side you're not touching the yeah. bottom yeah. you're using every piece of energy in yeah. your body to hold yourself up people really don't understand the difficulty that the sport entails and i even get surprised like i retired from synchronized swimming in 2008 retired again in 2010 <laughs> and as we know i have <laughs> retired again in again 2015. last year <laughs> and i know how hard it is i mm. know how much goes into this sport and even i couldn't believe how much it hurt physically <laughs> last year like it hurts so bad well I think again you know you're using your entire body to yeah. hold yourself up you know so there's not one part of your body that can, you can ever rest yeah you know like you're always engaged yeah so and people don't understand that you know just have anyone go try to tread water in a pool for and don't two breathe you're yeah. oxygen deprived exactly. too now take the breath away and people they they can't even ask them to do their own sport and just not breathe yeah. You know, and they're going to get a little glimpse of what it is to be a synchronized swimmer and now take away their ability to stand on something. Yeah. And you're supposed to not show people that this is hurting. Well, maybe um, that little cut I gave you at Worlds helped people know how hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, when you jab my eye out. <laughs> <laughs> he dove in first last year and then I dove in after him and I like sliced his eye. Mm -hmm. Like my hand went like that and you know, he's bleeding. And that's the other thing about something I'm assuming <laughs> is that when you're coming at me full speed, yeah. you know, it's like a car coming at you, but it's Thanks. behind a blur. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a tank just <laughs> running down like an army. <laughs> For both of us, I think it's safe to say that the moment that we won in Kazan was a pretty amazing moment. Oh, yeah. And we don't really ever talk about it the two of us because we both just kind of know well i mean i think even now goosebumps yeah <laughs> because it's it was the first time that something like happened so it was like this whole like mound of energy just came together because we had both had so much support and mm -hmm. you know it took an army for this to happen because we were working full-time training full-time mm -hmm. you know and going against the odds of people that have been swimming you know, constantly for the past 10 years, where yeah. we had not swum for 10 years. You know, so to um, be part of such a historical event, as well as pay off of all of the hard work that we have done, that other people have done with us, you know, that whole accumulation of support just kind of was the top off by winning that gold medal. You know, yeah. we're swimming from our heart. And yeah. it's, that's all that we could ask for. You yeah. know, and it paid off. Yeah. So we walked away as the first world champions of, you know, in the mixed duet event. Yeah. <laughs> I remember asking you, like, did we, did we just win? Is that, <laughs> you're like, yeah, like I couldn't even really uh -huh. believe it. And I think 
a really special moment was looking over and seeing our coach, Chris Carver, and our other teammate, Christina Lum Underwood. It was like, it looked like mm. they had been just like crying forever. Like yeah. they had tears down their face. You know, Chris is coach and coach and coach, but this is something that she created. We both desperately want everything to be so incredibly perfect. Mm -hmm. Like we both think that we're a hundred percent right. <laughs> All of the time. And like, <laughs> it just took you a while to learn that like I'm always right, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it took you a while to learn that, oh, <laughs> that I'm stubborn. <laughs> we did have those moments where we would kind of, you know, mm. clash because we both wanted the same thing, mm. but it wasn't always just sunshine and roses and laughter. It, I mean, it was, there were some really, really challenging days, really hard days. Yeah. But I think, you know, that's what happens when two people love each other so much is that, you know, the high points are even higher and the mm -hmm. low points are lower. Yeah. And it's because sure. you do care so much about each other and we cared so much about our goal that, you know, of course, mm -hmm. that fighting was going to happen and it was only going to make us stronger. Yeah. And I think, you know, in fighting with each other, it brought that fight that we would show the world as a force, as one. All right, let's do it. If you had no worries, all the money in the world, no bills to pay, um, no health concerns, no responsibilities, no problems. What would you do? I think I'm drawn to people that are the underdogs, mm -hmm. you know, because that's something in my life that I've had to deal with. Mm -hmm. So I think something that I could give to a child and make them realize that no matter how, they ha how hard or difficult they have it, mm -hmm. you know, there's always a smile and there's always something that's gonna be better for them. I think that I would travel. I love traveling. I just got back from Cuba. It was an amazing experience. I backpacked throughout Southeast Asia after the Olympics. I love seeing people all over the world. I would try to just share people's stories for who they are, not for who society thinks that they should be or what people think of who they are or what they stand for or what they believe in or what they look like. I would just want to share the stories of people all around the world for who they are. Awesome. Thanks for watching this episode of Cirque Stories. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I did shooting it. But as always, I'd love to hear from you. Which Cirque artist would you like me to interview next? And remember, you can always catch me on stage with the cast and crew of O at the Bellagio on the Las Vegas Strip. And you can actually buy tickets right now by clicking on the link. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on the next episode of Cirque Stories. Believe me, you're not gonna wanna miss this one. Be sure to look below for more information and links, and I'll see you next time.